Well, hello. I'm Nancy Jamison, and I'm a senior industry director at Frost and Sullivan in our digital transformation practice, and that's where our customer contact resides. So I'm here today with Casey Denby of Zenerit to talk about innovation and performance management. Hello, Casey. Hi, Nancy. So great to be with you today. So um, I hear you are head of sales. Do so you know all about what's going on and and how this is how this is playing out for you? So the reason that we're speaking today is that I recently gave Zenerit my best practices award in customer value leadership for performance management in the North American contact center industry. And I'm really excited about this because as you know, this is a really crowded field and very rightfully so, but I get really excited when I can find a solution provider that's doing something that's to solve an area of customer contact that people really aren't paying much attention to. And center is certainly doing that. So I surveyed the field and I looked around and I didn't find others that were quite doing what you're doing in performance management. But I really, I don't wanna steal your thunder. I'd rather have you explain how your solutions came about. So if we could go back a, you know, a couple of years to when Zenera was founded, and you could, if you could talk to us about what was, what was really happening in the contact center industry that, that called for a new approach. You got it, Nancy. So I'll just, you mentioned my title. Thank you so much. So I am the head of sales at Zenerate. And let me just summarize our company in one sentence. So Zenerate is a human-centered AI company that's focused on making the human being great through AI simulation training. And as you mentioned, it is a very crowded field. And the reason for that is because there's a lot of innovative technology in the space. So oh, yeah. taking a step back into a little bit of the history of the company, our CEO and co-founder used to be in the space and used to lead a contact center, a very large one. And he was in the mix, understanding the evolution of contact centers. And the reality is they've been chugging along now for a very long time. Very long more, time. And more, more and more companies outsource their calls to contact centers, which is phenomenal because there's efficiency gains. There's the opportunity to just do a better job. However, I would say over the past seven to 10 years, there's been this acceleration, this kind of evolution. There's been a lot of change happening in the space. And of course, even pre-pandemic, there was a movement toward remote work as more and more people have the technology at home and the Wi-Fi speeds to make that a reality. Of course, this was exacerbated by the pandemic. And as a result, there were a lot of new technology providers jumping into the space trying to help make life better. Unfortunately, most of them were focused on eliminating the agent from yeah. the experience. And the, the sad part about that is the technology was ahead of the customer experience. And let me just throw kind of chatbots out there, right? Where it's really exciting you know, concept. Right now, it's chat GPT. There's so much excitement out in the marketplace. But is it improving or deterring the customer experience? And so as a result, there was the traditional training methodologies that existed just weren't able to keep up. And as a result, agent performance declined. The job became harder and harder because this innovative technology, listen, we are a technology provider. We love technology, but our technology is focused on making the human being great. And unfortunately, there was a lot of kind of taking the low hanging fruit away, which was the easier part of the job. Yeah. And so now agents are left with even more complex scenarios and conversations to handle. Yeah, you hit upon something now. I think the technology is great. I know the, ch the chatbots and everything are great and we need them, but it's a huge issue in the contact center industry that really goes against the mantra that we're always you know, speaking of, which is really improving the employee and customer experience. And so right. has a lot of impacts. I mean, what kind of impacts were you seeing? I mean, I think we see less customer loyalty in general from a customer side, right? So customer loyalty is going down. And the reason is because the service levels are going down. And it, it, this creates this, this gap in alignment of expectations of performance and how we're doing, and then how customers are perceiving that service. So listen, I'm all with you. I would prefer to self-serve 100% of the time. I am a, a, a frequent flyer. I, I'm a frequent traveler. I stay at my particular hotel brand. I, I fly my particular airline. And it is a win for me if I never have to contact them. Mm -hmm. But typically when I do, it's because I need the help. 
And if I can't get somebody on the other end of the line who can help me, who's confident and knows what they're doing and is empowered to do the role, then it's a big, big problem, especially for loyal customers like myself. So there is a revenue impact. Now let's flip over to the agent side. It's harder on the people and it's harder on the teams when they are not adequately prepared to do the job. There is a huge, huge amount of attrition in contact centers today. Listen, I talk to major brands consistently. A, a big, big challenge right now isn't just attrition in general, it's attrition zero to 90 days post training. Mm. That's crazy to think about, right? I mean, we used to have attrition levels that were 12 months or longer, some companies even better. And now we're seeing zero to 90 day attrition at, at all time highs. And agent NPS is hitting rock bottom as a result. Yeah, you no, know, I- turnover leads to kind of this unsustainable bad cycle that we're, you know, uh, susceptible to falling into. Yeah, and it's costly and it's cost out. So why not hire right in the first place? Why not train right in the first place? And that's what really intrigued me about you. So um, can you you explain a little bit about, you know, how this how this all works and how you change this? Yeah, absolutely. So the way that it works, I mean, I kind of um, compare it to learning a new language. When, when we think about learning a new language, it's not just about talking to the customer as an agent in the context center. That's only one part of the role. It's about listening to them, deciphering what they need. I mean, if you're trying to learn a new language and you're just talking and you're not listening to the other person in front of you, it doesn't do you very much good. You have to be able to learn and listen and decipher. And it's the same concept within the contact center. Now, add having that conversation simultaneously navigating very complex and convoluted systems in many different leading brands that you wouldn't even think. You'd think they have to have the top technology across the planet, right? Yeah. The reality is they each have seven, 10, 12, 15 systems the agents have to navigate through. Maybe it's because of acquisitions over time, but there's a lot of challenge. There's a lot of nuance within the role. So I like to say there's just too much going on. Too much going on. <laughs> and as a result, the, the confidence and the performance and the proficiency goes to the wayside. So I think about it as um, the new way to learn language is studies are catching up. Think Rosetta Stone, Duolingo, things like that. It's all about immersion, virtual immersion. And I happen to be fluent in the Spanish language. And I only learned so. Listen, I took seven years in high school and, and you know pre-high school. And I thought I was amazing at Spanish. I, I was nowhere near anything conversational. But I got there through complete and total immersion. I actually lived in the country of Ecuador for two years. And the theme I'm trying to get to here is that you can't learn anything unless you do it. It's learning by doing. And we don't, just as human beings, we don't get better at anything until we practice. I, I took years of Mandarin and I never became fluent because I never had the opportunity. And if I had had your product, I'd have been able to do it. So that's, you just hit the nail on the head. You know, tell me a little bit more about actually how this works. Yeah, great question, Nancy. So the reality is that AI Coach offers real life simulation training in whatever vertical, whatever industry, whatever job they were hired to do. Now we're focused here on contact centers, but AI Coach kind of spans beyond contact centers. It's any customer facing role. Think sales, think people in a retail branch, think think people in a a food establishment or retail establishment that talk to customers each and every day. It's immersive learning. Now, here's the the kicker, right? Without the need for constant human intervention. That's the beauty of it. Now, before I came here, I was actually a customer of Zenerate. And the reality is I had this gap. I had this need that so many other brands are experiencing today. And I was lucky enough to find this solution and implement it successfully, which is why I knew I was so confident that it worked. Brain science and studies over time have continued to show that we learn through doing. On-the-job training is how people learn. Now, I, I was used to the, the Tiger Woods example. Even if people don't golf, they understand who Tiger Woods is. I grew up in the Tiger era. I watched him on TV every single weekend. 
I couldn't become a great, great golfer or even a good golfer just by watching Tiger play. I had to get off the couch, get clubs, get to the golf course, take lessons, practice, 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 practice. And that's what I did. And I became somewhat formidable golfer. I'm not in the tour or anything like that, yeah. but I became, you know, good enough because I practiced and that's what we offer. We offer also a faster way to train and onboard new hires, plus close the skill gaps of those tenured team members as well. So I'll, I'll finish uh, kind of answering on, on this particular statistic. Traditional training methodologies, specifically in contact centers, focusing on a reliance of PowerPoint and facilitation and e-learnings. Agents retain about five to 10% of that information. Now introduce simulation training and you go from concept A to the simulator, you practice, you get better, then you introduce concept B and so on and so forth. That retention level now jumps, skyrockets to 75%. So, okay, so simulation training then. Um, tell me a little bit how it works. I'm sure that agents love this as well because there's no judgment here. There's no one looking over their shoulder. Yeah, that, that's the beauty of it. We actually got some feedback recently of, oh man, agents <laughs> hate side-by-sides or they hate you know, <laughs> hijacking in because there's a lot of pressure. I mean, yeah. the reality is they're always being evaluated on what they do. But yeah, great question, Nancy. So let me go back to the simulation stories themselves. They encompass the top and most impactful conversation drivers for each and every company. So we do not create just generic off-the-shelf library stories where you can come in and just become okay at something. We want people to become great. So we do the bespoke model. We build the custom shoe for you. We make sure that it fits right and that it's comfortable and that it does the job it's supposed to do. So you can prevent the shin splints and all those different things you can imagine. I just got a pair of running shoes, first time in my life customized for me. So this is, this is hitting home, a very good time. But that's the truth is we build it unique for each particular company, each particular brand and each nuance within those companies. Now, um, the, the reality is that agents get to practice the call greeting, the authentication, the actual soft skills involved. So think empathy, think active listening, and also kind of key compliance requirements that they have to navigate in order to get through those conversations and remain compliant, of course, according to quality standards. And then I also mentioned before the, the successful screen navigation and so much more. Yeah, well, uh, you know, you just touched upon something else, which is a really hot topic in the industry right now, which is empathy. You know, that's part of that employee and customer experience. So how does the um, AI system teach that to them? A, empathy in general is such a critical and lacking skill set in contact centers today. You're hitting it right on. I actually just happened to be at a CX and contact center summit this past yeah. week in Miami. And that was a huge topic empathy and the lack thereof. Leading brands across enterprises that everybody listening to this conversation would recognize share the same levels of concern. It's, hey, how do we make sure that they do it in their own words and that they're empathetic and that they're relating to customers, et cetera, et cetera. Let me just take one particular example. The healthcare industry was rocked by the pandemic and reputation went from maybe all-time highs to perhaps all-time lows. And people became more, you're just trying to get the job done and you have less time to build rapport. Now think about this handling the call. Let's just say yourself or a relative just spent some time in a hospital bed. And as a result, you missed a payment and you had to call in and ask for them to waive the late fee. So the agent has two options here, right? They can be robotic and mechanical or they can take that opportunity to build rapport and connect with that particular customer. And AI coach is looking for the intent of the representative. It is not looking for a perfected script. We are not training robots here. We're training human beings. We're helping them develop into something great. And so what happens is, let's just say you're the caller and you say, hey, Casey, you know, I was sick and in the hospital. I wasn't able to make my payment. If I say back to you, oh my goodness, Nancy, I am so sorry that happened to you. How can I help? Well, I would appreciate if you could waive the late fee. Absolutely. I will do that for you right now. Empowerment. 
empathy, building connection and rapport. And I'm thinking, I'm walking away from that call. You are, and you're thinking, wow, this company's amazing. Yeah. And they didn't want to make the call to begin with. That's right. They didn't want to make the call. Now, if the agent chooses to respond in a different direction, doesn't acknowledge the customer, doesn't empathize with them, et cetera, AI coach recognizes that, will step in and provide them with real-time coaching. And then I, as the, the agent, get to practice again until I get that step correct. And then we're able to track all this in the reporting, which I think we'll get to here shortly. Yeah, I mean, even the, listening to that story makes me feel empathetic. <laughs> it's, it's, it is a great example. So so I'm, what about this actual training part of it that allows the agents to succeed really well? Yeah, it, I mean, it, the reality is... AI coach allows them to, to handle those tough situations like we were just talking about, but in their own words. So they don't lose personality as they become trained and learn company A's method of servicing their customers. They're able to be themselves, just like we are in this, in this interview. I think our personalities kind of come across. And all the while, I get to then become great at my job. So I, I mentioned it before, but AI Coach isn't scripted. It's built around a natural conversational framework. And that, Nancy, is the power of the AI technology. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, getting away from scripts. Uh, so so what, what is it like for the agent as they go through this? I mean, how does, how does it actually work with them? That is a phenomenal question. It all comes down to practice. The number one thing that agents say as far as feedback, exit, interview feedback, et cetera, or post-training feedback, I hear this all the time. The number one, and when I was in that role, by the way, I was leading training worldwide for, for a reputable company, is we need more practice. We need more practice. And, and practice not necessarily in a nesting environment where there's risk. You're on the live system. You're talking to a live customer. There's risk. Um, or someone hanging mean, over your head. Yes. Yeah. They mean simulated training where there's no risk. You and I and everybody else that's been through grade school and held a job at any time, we've done role play before with humans. It's awkward. It's painful. <laughs> and it's really not that effective, but we understand the value of practice. Now, Take kind of all the nuance away from human to human role play, such as bias and inconsistency and all of those things. And just the fact that you have to have all these human resources. I mean, I know a lot of companies that are taking human resources, think uh, quality folks, other agents off the phones to give them practice with the new hire agents. The efficiency is just destroyed. It's expensive too. Oh, it's incredibly expensive. And, and you're taking people off the phone that are doing their job and you're not even bringing the best of role play into the scenario. So that's where AI coach kind of comes in. They get real-time feedback. They handle again, those situations, the simulations of real calls. It's the exact conversation types and customers they'll be dealing with. I'll mention one more thing that's critical. When people call the contact center, such as me, I'm a loyalist again with an airline and with, it, with a hotel brand, um, I'm typically experiencing a challenge. And so I might not be necessarily calling and I'm very happy. <laughs> There's all sorts of emotions of people that are calling into the contact center. And if you don't, you don't adequately prepare contact center agents to handle those calls, or even know that they're going to be speaking to rude, you know, uh, oh, really? sad customers, angry customers who may yell at them and, and, you know, bring things to the table that are just extremely challenging. You can practice all of those types of emotions. So you don't just get a very nice, peaceful customer in AI coach. You get any type of customer that the, the, the brand would like to see. So we build in those simulations and we train AI coach to, to you know, be rude and be angry and be sad and, and give the agent the opportunity to respond with the proper soft skill or the proper skill mastery, you could say, to, to maybe uh, de-escalate that customer, to mm -hmm. empathize with them, mm -hmm. such as the hospital example. Um, even to just acknowledge them, right? Mirror what they said. Oh, Nancy, I see you're calling in because, you know, you had a late payment. Um, thank you, you know, for being a loyal customer for 10 years or whatever that may be. And 
it allows them to then have key insights into their performance uh, as well as management where there's dashboards and other things like that. Yeah, it, it, I, you just level set everyone. So like they may not even know how to, what mirroring is or how to do that. So this is just, this is awesome without having to take away from other resources and, and interrupt people's workday that are doing what they should be doing, right? Correct. So, um, what, is the, what does the dashboard look like? What, is, what do they see? Awesome question. Management has full insight into performance within AI Coach. And what's great about AI Coach is there's, there's really very little setup. And when an agent kind of logs in, they begin to practice from day one of training. And they get their practices in and, and AI Coach reporting will show how many times they practiced, who practiced, how many phrases they sent back to the customer or prospect, which is what AI Coach represents, as well as their average handle time. And then it gives a very detailed step-by-step -step analysis of their performance throughout the entire conversation. Let's think, let's just go back to a previous uh, question, call greeting, authentication. And if you're in healthcare, you have to hit the HIPAA requirements. If you're in banking, you have to be very specific in making sure you're talking to the right customer. Um, there's so many different nuances for each of those roles. And then it's the soft skills that you have to handle. It's step A, step C, step D. How are you performing along the way? The dashboards have all of this information. It shows you whether or not the agent required coaching. And so it provides that number uh, also of the times that they needed coaching. So if it was two times, that it would be represented within the reporting and then you can see micro, you can see macro. So an individual agent's single call, maybe they practice that 20 times. What about all of their calls? What about agent certification? I don't know a ton of companies that have a really effective certification methodology. Well, how do we know agents are ready yeah. to talk to real customers? Well, our dashboards give you the green, yellow, and red based on the company's performance level expectations. And I'll give you one example, Nancy, real quick. We, we had a customer that was piloting our solution and there was a significant sample size in AB tests and they have really high graduation requirements. And those using AI coach, 91% of those agents graduated. Whereas the, the group that did not use AI coach, which was significant in multiple cohorts, 53% graduation rate. Wow. <laughs> that's 53%, woo, that's significant. But then take it beyond that. They did zero to 30 day attrition. This was a very large healthcare company, by the way, one that everybody would recognize. And zero to 30 day attrition was even better. It was mid teens for the, the group that had AI coach and mid thirties for the team that graduated that did not have AI coach training. And wow. it's really, really, really simple. Confidence promotes performance. Performance promotes, you know, career path. It promotes opportunity to succeed. It promotes you're doing better at your job and there's more opportunity for you to grow in your career. So I know that was kind of a lengthy answer, but the reality is we track anything and everything and allows for the company to be able to track performance, not just um, during training, but also post-training as well as they come back into the simulator for training. I just think it's a win-win period because it's not everything you just said, but also the fact that agents probably really like to use it because everybody is like, okay, it's another new tool. I got to use this thing. But Sounds easy to use and great, but I have a, a kind of a big key question because, yes. you know, in the contact center industry, there's so many applications out there that you can, you know, within each company, but also that right. you can add on. So um, how does this integrate into someone's existing environment? Is there like a big overhaul to it? No. In fact, it's negligible IT lift. One of the biggest reasons why companies are super excited about our solution is not only because of everything we've talked about now, but because it's incredibly easy to stand up. So there's no actual IT integration required whatsoever to get going on AI Coach. The only two technical requirements, and I don't even know how technical they are, <laughs> but it's having a Chrome or Edge browser. So number one, and then number two is a headset. And all oh, agents already exactly. have headsets. <laughs> so exactly. really painful to think about. Yeah, it, it's incredibly <laughs> easy to stand up. And the reality is it doesn't take long to, to get going with any customer. We can be up and running in a matter of weeks 
which is huge value, especially if you're ramping or scaling, et cetera. And, and I can tell you that most companies are shocked when we share this and they always want to do kind of a deep dive IT, you know, conversation. And then they realize, oh, <laughs> I guess we didn't really need to have guys. that. Yeah. yeah really. <laughs> So, so it's it's great to be able to work for a company that also values the um, you know brand and the companies that that we you know are lucky enough to call our customers who need quick solutions, need quick fixes, and we're able to partner with them to bring that to the marketplace. So I have, I have another question. I know people would ask uh, you. You already mentioned some, and also just the idea that you don't have to spend any money on IT. It's right. fabulous, right? And um, but overall, what kind of other results are you seeing? That would, I, I'm I'm already going to buy your product if I were contact center. Right <laughs> Let loose. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that, Nancy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the reality is overall KPI lift, but I'm going to focus on one, and it's speed to proficiency. The faster that agents become proficient, that particular single metric has a trickle effect, trickle down effect for every other metric in the contact center space. And why that is, is because again, the faster they're up to proficiency, the better they're able to service and faster they're able to service their customers. The higher the agent NPS, they're happier, they're more confident, they're doing their job, higher the customer CSAT, higher quality scores, lower AHT, you name it. So it's learning and, and getting up to speed quicker than ever before. And it's so critical in this type of job because there's a lot of people coming in the door and don't you want to stop and shut the back door? Unfortunately, there's too many people that come in, determined it's not for me, and they leave. This impacts everything. A few champion challenger data points on average from our customers, so independent studies, 56% improvement in speed of proficiency. You think about that and, and, and you're like, whoa, that is not insignificant whatsoever. Um, when I was leading my, my role at that global organization, it was over 60% improvement in speed of proficiency. And I know this, the numbers are real. Now, also trailing that, again, everything kind of follows that. Average 33% improvement in CSAT scores, average 30% plus improvement in quality assurance scores, average 32% reduced attrition. Now, that's significant, talking about that zero to 90 day attrition. And, and that one example I gave you before, that attrition rate was over 70% improvement, Whoa. 70% for one particular, one particular client. So you do the math. Some obviously have higher um, you know, KPI lift and others, but the reality is there's positive lift for everyone. And I would just kind of speak to this. It gets back to, to the agent. How do they feel about their jobs? It's their morale. Right? Am I in the right place? It's just kind of this virtuous cycle, and and, and that impacts everything else. FCRHT, you name it. Um, but agent NPS is one thing I'm very proud it, it, to to say is one of our highest impacting for the positive metrics um, with AI Coach, helping agents feel better about their particular job. Yeah, you, know, you say, do I feel like I'm in the right place? Well, this would give them the assurance that if they didn't. If that they felt uncomfortable about any of it, they could coach and nobody would even know about it except for them. Well, the stats, but anyway. So um, another question I have is that you keep alluding to, you know, the, the, these places that are employing this, but sure. you know, I know you have some big, pretty big brand names out there. Can you give us some examples? Sure. Uh, uh, we have companies of all sizes that leverage our platform across many industries and verticals. I'll name a few that are probably a little bit more recognizable. Um, but you know, anything from banking, we have Bank of America as a client, credit card, we have American Express, Western Union, Verizon, Optum Healthcare, United Airlines, Nintendo, e even BPOs. So GenPact and StarTech are also customers of ours. So we're talking national, multinational, international, global companies that trust AI coach to help improve their performance, not only uh, from a customer experience standpoint, but from an agent experience standpoint, which of course is so incredibly important. And these companies, these brands are fielding millions and millions of phone calls. So there's a lot of opportunity to get better uh, very, very fast. Yeah, I think that you are gonna have a great impact on the contact center industry with this. Um, from end to end, and um, probably could summarize up, but but also want to ask you to hit on something that you, 
a little bit sad. I, and I said earlier about why not hire right from the beginning? So mm -hmm. I'm assuming you can use this to kind of also weed out people that might not be a fit. Yeah, that's a great point. We say we have three kind of primary use cases for our solution. The first one being pre-hire assessment or pre-hire fit. And then you have onboarding of new hires, of course, we talked about that. And then the continuous training and development, upskilling, closing skill gaps, introducing new products and services for tenured agents. But getting back to the pre-hire, you want to make sure you're bringing in the, the right type of skill set. And so we can actually build simulations that are very, very simple. And the AI coach walks you through the simulation as a, you don't need any training at all. It's very elementary, but it introduces, you can give this to pre-hires and determine whether or not they have the skill set that you're looking for. It, you're hiring them for a communication job. So you want to assess their communication skills. Well, it's, but it's also huge that they're going to get an idea of what the company's like. And if they don't feel yes. like it's a fit, they're not going to waste their time or yours. And it, and, but it also will let them know while they're there, that if they're not quite a fit, but they're really interested that they have this tool that they could then use to get better. Absolutely. They, they want to be there because they yes. see that they're going to help them succeed, but also you're That's right. right. Alignment of expectations, Nancy, is critical. If, if you paint this beautiful picture of this job that doesn't exist that you're hiring them for. <laughs> they're going to be upset and they're going to leave. So you're leave. right. It's absolutely true. Yeah. So it's nip those costs in the bud right there. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So is there anything else you'd like to like to add? I would just say, you know, what does this mean for contact centers in general? We have this hope in this mission that we're empowering human beings to create a better life for themselves and the people they love. So we think that through enhanced you know, alignment of expectations, training and development, et cetera, et cetera, that contact centers can become an even better place to work. And maybe the reputation that's been there for so long and, and been struggling over the past decade or so can tide for, you know, take a kind of a turn for the better. And we believe it can be more stable, less stressful, more rewarding, and become more of a career or launch pad opportunity for many different careers. And it's really simple, Nancy. It just comes down to helping people succeed in their roles. And when people feel confident and they perform, they are happier. And that smile that comes through the phone is real. It's not fake. It's not imaginary. It's real. And we want to bring smiles to faces all across the planet. And, and we do that through um, our AI simulation training. Well, you know, you know, happy agent, happy customer. So I hit right. one of our core principles in the contact center industry right on the head. So um, I think that it was it was really great getting to talk to you again about this today. And and once again, I'm uh, really proud to have awarded you the 2023 North American Customer Value Leadership Award for performance management and making performance management better. So it was really, really well served. It's an absolute honor, Nancy. Thank you so much on behalf of, of Zenerate's um, employee base and, and also our customers. We are so grateful for Frost and Sullivan, everything you're doing in the marketplace. And of course, to be recognized for all the hard work that's, that's taken place. Thank you. Well, thank you.